the cloud button. What is up, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Excited to have everyone today. Wherever you're at in the world, let us know where you're at in the world and how long you've been in real estate. We have an exciting, exciting presentation today with my head system strategist, Jacqueline. You're going to walk you through processes and how to create some longevity in your business. But uh, before we get to that, we're going to get started here in about four minutes. Uh, we are an agent standard time. So uh, we, uh, we're gonna start in about four minutes and uh, see if anyone else hops in. But let us know in the chat, where are you at in the world and how long have you been in real estate? Matt Goldman's Grand Rapids, Michigan. What's up, my man? Hope you're doing well. Looks like we're gonna have a good turnout today. I'm stoked. Give us about another three minutes, 42 seconds, and we're gonna get rocking and rolling here. Let us know in the chat, where are you at in the world and how long have you been in real estate? If you're just joining us now, where are you at in the world and how long you've been in real estate? New York, 19 years. Gary, hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you get a ton of value today. I am excited to sit back today and just learn from my system strategist. This is exciting. I don't have to teach anything. We good. You get rocking and rolling in three minutes and 13 seconds. For everyone that just joined, let us know where are you at in the world and how long have you been in real estate? That would be amazing. Would love to know. LA, 20 years. Adam, welcome, welcome. Excited to have you here today. Toronto, two years. Love it, love it. We love Toronto. I love Toronto in the summer. In the winter, it's a little cold for me. But I love Toronto in the summer. Especially the Lakeshore area. Beautiful. Awesome. We're going to get rocking and rolling here in a couple minutes. See if we have any tricklers that pop in with us. Welcome, welcome everyone. We have some people that just trickled in. For people that are trickling in, let us know how long have you been in real estate and where are you at in the world? We're letting some people in. We're gonna get started in about a minute and 50 seconds. Really excited everyone in here. So far we've got New York, 19 years, LA, 20 years, Toronto, two years. We have some veterans with us today, Jacqueline. This is exciting. Orange County, California, on and off for a little while. Oh. Love Orange County. I'm going to be in Orange County uh, literally tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, Wednesday? Yeah, I'll be there for a conference. We love Orange County. We love everywhere in California. Me and Jacqueline were just having a conversation about California prior to. Just like there's something there's something in the water here. That's for sure. The vibes. The vibes. We're rocking and rolling here about 40 seconds and uh, really excited to share with what we have with what we have for you today. I took a look at some of the models that uh, Jacqueline's going to walk with you through and uh, excited to. Are you on jet lag or what? What was that? I said, are you still on jet lag? I'm like feeling a little jet lagged. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the layover to Bogota and then Bogota to uh, Los Angeles was uh it was, you know, me running through the airport trying to get to my connecting flight. That was fun. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, well, well. We're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get rocking and rolling. I wanted, we had one last person that just popped in with us. So, um, I want to say thank you more than anything. Me and Jacqueline were having a conversation about a month ago about doing this, uh, this presentation and trying to provide a massive amount of value to everyone here. And make sure I have a pin as well. 
me and Jacqueline were talking a, uh, about a month ago about doing this process workshop and, uh, and she came to me and we had a conversation about, you know, just really trying to provide some more education around like, what can real estate agents do right now and how, how can they create longevity in their business, create consistency. And um, what we're going to talk a lot about today uh, it is around like our, a system we created called Three to Thrive. And uh, there is a really important element towards actually creating longevity in a real estate business. And I don't really, like, I've been had the opportunity to work alongside of Jacqueline over the last six months and she works on a daily basis. Has it been six months? How long has it been now? Eight months? Yeah, yeah over six, six months. months. So like, you know, Jacqueline had an, her own like mini agency. She, you know, shut, really shut that down, came work for us at Sheridan Street. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure working alongside of her. She's really helped us create some systems and processes in our business that have been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, I just more than anything want to say thank you for everything you're doing for our clients. Um, and I'm so, so excited that we have the opportunity to share with everyone some really key tactics on how they can create really key systems and processes in their business to create longevity, to kind of like alleviate some of the burnout that real estate agents feel and that, you know, the roller coaster ride of commission up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. So I want to hand it over to you, kind of let you do your thing. Uh, I don't want to steal any more of your thunder. I'm literally just going to mute myself in the background and I'm going to let you take over from here. Okay. Amazing. Well, I'm going to pull up my screen here. So just before you meet yourself, uh, let me know that you can see. You're rocking and you are rolling. I'm rolling. All right. Um, well, Cody kind of welcomed you all, but I'm super excited as Cody has already mentioned, I am super passionate about um, supporting and specifically, I really have been drawn towards real estate agents, you guys uh, hustle and uh, just the amount of things that you have to juggle on a day to day basis. Um, for me anyways, brought a huge opportunity to uh, create processes in between all of the juggling to take a few balls out of the air for you so that you know, you can find, you know, not only success in your business, but you can also find that work-life balance and find, you know, uh, your best self within your work and within your personal life. Uh, so what we're going to be going over today. Uh, so my hope is that we can get through. Uh, I obviously want to tell you guys a little bit about who I am behind the screen. Uh, and then we'll go through what I think is definitely the foundational piece is understanding the psychology of the patterning behind why you're currently doing what you're doing. And what you also may experience is why it's hard to break what you're currently doing. So we're going to dig into that. Um, we'll have that foundation to then go into our uh, processes model where we're going to try and figure out how you can implement those uh, three principles into your current business and then figuring out from those principles, how those principles will then, uh, as Cody mentioned, implement into three to thrive so that we can really crush the momentum and continue that momentum so that it doesn't feel like it's those up and downs. Uh, I'll summarize some takeaways from the, uh, the information we go, in, go into and then yeah, we'll drop a few resources for you. Um, I'm sure Cody will be able to email, email all those resources out for you and then obviously offer some time to uh, do a question and answer. So diving in, who am I? Uh, so I began kind of my, my journey uh, with loving sharing knowledge uh, within kind of actually teaching. Honestly, I started within kinesiology studying that and then uh, wanted to teach the knowledge I had. So I became, became a teacher and then went into personal training. I realized quite quickly that grade ones were not my jam. I was in an SK1 class juggling 27 kids and uh, in my head, I wanted to implement the systems. However, like they just want to have fun. So um, I learned quite quickly that uh, almost close, but um, pivoted to working with adults. So I uh, worked in personal training, making amazing workshops, helping people uh, to combine lose over 500 pounds. So uh, super proud of the processes that I was able to embed in those people's lives to produce long lasting results. 
there. Um, and then I noticed my clientele was really uh, actually business owners and then first, uh, actually real estate agents. So uh, the, the universe kind of brought that into my sphere and uh, I latched on and, and actually started a business working with real estate agents. Um, and then surprise, I, uh, we had twins. So I have identical, two-year-old identical boys. So that um, if there's any moms here, you understand the, uh, the, we'll call it the challenge, but also amazing gift that that is. Uh, so the business worked really well, as you guys know, with real estate agents. So that's one of the joys of why you work the business you do, because you do have um, the freedom of design. So um, I dove into that after, you know, the boys were one, I guess. And uh, from there, just realized that even looking back at personal training, it's all systems. It's all processes that you're putting in your day to day life, uh, in your business, and then ultimately the awareness of those processes when they're not working uh, and how to make them better. So um, in starting with the psychology of your programming, so um, I want to make sure I can see you guys all here. Oh, go back here. All right, so would love to see you guys kind of wave your hand in here if you and remember way back the uh, light bright. So I kind of have an image here uh, of the light bright. I like to, because it's psychology, kind of pull the an analogy so that it's easier for all of us to understand. But the, the light bright, um, if you don't remember, was this really boxy, Kind of light machine and you would ask for Christmas these cool patterns and you would put the pattern on top and then you would have these little colored pegs and you would fill them in like the mountains and uh, why I use this analogy is because we all have you know pre-exposed programming but uh, when it comes to how we put the lights in uh, obviously we follow the initial pattern and even if we take those lights out the light when we turn it on still shines through those specific spaces that we've punctured in. And that's kind of a really easy term to understand your programming. And why I highlight that is because when you started and uh, you know, when we all start our businesses, you know, we, we build off that, that excitement and uh, passion for you know, whatever we've figured out we are awesome at or wanna do. And that often is built off of adrenaline. Uh, and, you know, one thing starts to work and we, we throw everything we've got into that. And when it comes to, you know, agents is the, a lot of the push or what I noticed when I was working with new agents is, you know, you know, wing it and just take what you can get. Really that hustle mentality, uh, a lot of overworking and boundaries kind of aren't really uh, something that you can really have when you know you're you're working to get those those deals and build your business. So uh, the habits, you know, how we the original light break pattern is built off of those the, that neural programming where you know uh, you don't have the boundaries. You maybe don't have a set commission, or you know, for yourself maybe you have staging with this offer, but you um, then reduce your commission with this offer. And um, that ends up really almost, you can start to feel that it creates a system of chaos. Um, and with that system of chaos, you can't really develop a process behind it. Um, and so why I highlight this is because uh, I wanna not only acknowledge, you know, you've all gotten here. I saw a lot of you guys, you know, 19 years, 20 years in the business. Uh, I'm not sure, but we, we have some newbies in here as well, but. Um, ultimately you got to where you are. So recognizing that the programming did serve you at one point. So, uh, you know, it served you to get to you to where you're at, but uh, when it comes to the hermit crab, I, I love this because uh, when he grows, he has to make the daring decision uh, to decide that he's uncomfortable or more uncomfortable in the smaller shell uh, than the uncomfort or discomfort of the unknown. So uh, that's really where a lot of agents are at and why they, um, where we end up uh, meeting them in, in Sheridan Street is where they're, they're ready. They're ready to, you know, tackle the unknown and really build some new processes in their business. So, uh, and, and really acknowledging as well that it is, it's scary. 
Um, the little hermit crab doesn't have that strong shell anymore to, you know, feel supported, feel comforted in his chaos, right? Even though the day to day for you does feel chaotic, it's a comfort. It becomes a comfort because you're so used to it. So uh, really taking that risk and moving on to bigger and better things. So I'd love to give you guys uh, a minute here to really take some time reflecting on writing down three things that served you when you first started as an agent. And now you know in your heart that they don't serve you. And then the next section is I want you to write down three things, three things that you know will serve you that you haven't implemented yet. So you know, maybe you see them with agents in the, uh, in the office or uh, maybe you even catch yourself in a non-busy time, you hit that alignment with your process, with your buyers or sellers, and you know it works, but then you go back to that programming when it starts to get busy. So please write down those six things now. Also, side note, I saw that we had some people from Toronto. I've been, I went out apple picking on the, um, on the weekend. And you, I don't know if you can really tell, but this is a very large apple. So Cody, that is something that I would miss if I moved to LA was definitely just the, uh, the seasons that we go through where I look forward to fall specifically for the apple picking. Fall is beautiful. Yeah. All right. So um, I hope you've got your six things there. Uh, and really just taking a taking, you know, all of that, we're going to leave that where it is. We're aware of the programming. We're going to see our process model and then really just see what we can implement uh, today for you guys. So our process model that we have here, um, and I've kind of tried to really Cody uh, discusses a lot about how simplifying things uh, and we really strive to do that within uh, Sheridan Street because you guys, again, the juggle. Um, so focusing here on the three areas um, that we find the three principles that if you can build a foundation off of those can bring a lot of success uh, in your business. So first one being consistency, uh, and we'll go into these, but consistency um, through automation, through our three to thrive, and through committing to your calendar. Authenticity, so authenticity, how you're showing up, right? So the connecting daily, uh, through your experiences and buzzwords or branding. Uh, it was what we're gonna use there. And then uh, discipline. So really how you're showing up, discipline, boundaries. Uh, so knowing your offer, ske schedule, and then know your worth. All right. <clears throat> so when it comes to authenticity, the buzzwords or brand, um, what this is going to offer you is it's going to, uh, or offer the businesses, it creates a feeling that you have or do something that no one else has. Um, and this was something that I, I picked up along the way uh, that I noticed a lot of agents who just, that they had, they had that thing. Um, <clears throat> they had that thing that piqued my interest as specifically with a buzzword, just like strategist. Um, so instead of just calling themselves a real estate agent, they call themselves a real estate strategist, or they call themselves, um, they are an expert at the move up method. I'm just going to grab a drink. So the move up method, uh, you guys know, would be <clears throat> targeting specifically people who already own a home and then are looking to move into something bigger. What this does is it speaks specifically to that audience. So they know exactly what they're looking for. And you're starting to use those buzzwords within your advertising, within the way that you speak to be able to resonate with that audience. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Seems like maybe Camila uh, is passing along. I hope not COVID number two to me. Please say no. Please that's, don't speak that into existence. I know. <clears throat> All right. Um, then we have within authenticity, we have experiences. So just as I shared with you guys, <clears throat> you knew over the weekend that I went apple picking. <clears throat> you guys have a huge opportunity 
within social media to be able to connect <clears throat> agents that leverage their experiences to create authentic connections through their platforms. This is a game changer. <clears throat> this is a game changer <clears throat> in how you're able to show up because you can become a real person. And when you become a real person, just as I said with my weekend, you feel if any of you do connect with Apple Picking, <clears throat> you feel connected to me immediately. Once we've established that connection, you're able to feel safe. And once you're be able, able to create a safe space, they're gonna trust you. And that is exactly what we wanna achieve with the authenticity is establishing the trust because then you're going to be more top of mind. You're going to be somebody <clears throat> considered within their inner circle. And the <clears throat> last portion here is connecting through more than just real estate. So connecting in a, a way where you're sharing your day, a day in the life of, <clears throat> I know Instagram is huge for this now where <clears throat> a lot of people aren't even scrolling through. They're actually going directly to <clears throat> the stories up top. So in that sense, you want to show them what makes you you um, because there are there's abundance of people so there's people out there who aren't going to like it obviously but in alignment you're not going to want to be working with those people you're going to want to be working with the people who appreciate you for who you are and the service you have to offer so sprinkling those little consistent touch points allows you to be top of mind and you also are creating again that safe space for them to be vulnerable with you because <laughs> When you look at, for us, uh, an agent, it's transactional, right? That's the service you offer. But for them, this is a real experience for them where, like, it's a huge life point for them. I think back to when I bought my first house and, you know, we had no idea what we were doing. We had to have full trust in our agent of not only the neighborhood, because we were moving here to, to Peter Rowe, the original uh, where Sheridan Street started. But, you know, we didn't know the neighborhood. We didn't know that we had to do, you know, all those specific things that like, you know, home inspection, uh, we had specific things that we needed to trust our real estate to tell us to do. And in that circumstance to have established trust because I knew the real estate agent allowed that process to go much smoother. And uh, a quote I want you guys to think about when you're showing up or when you're looking at your phone or you have your social media day that you're trying to build your content is if you see a bus show up daily at the same time, you're going to assume that when you need the bus, it's going to be there, right? So the same goes for your platforms uh, and your emails and how you show up. You need to put your mind in the perspective of the consumer that they, if they can see you consistently showing up, they're going to believe that you're going to show up for them. Can we, um, can we just hop in really, really quick here and just kind of explain yeah. when you say buzzwords, um, it creates a feeling you have to, you, you can do something for them that like the brand, like, you know, I love the move up method. Like we use the home buyer advantage. Like, what do you think that these buzzwords can do in order to help give clarity to a real estate agent in a process that allows them to effectively communicate what they do and how they do it? Uh, I think I'll go actually to the example that I used, um, in some of our training for our agents is like, um, and I'm Canadian, so forgive me, I will use the example of fishing, um, where we have a bun, we have different depths of lakes, right? So we have freshwater, um, we have rivers, and there are certain fish in certain rivers or, or lakes. And um, you, as an agent, you really have to figure out, first off, what you're fishing for. Uh, and, and why I say that is because then you need to know, then it allows you to understand what lure you need to use to catch that fish. Um, so what I often do with agents is um, I'll just ask them, you know, what do you enjoy? When's, give me an example of, you know, your favorite time you worked with a client. When you look through that, you know, what about that experience allowed you to elevate your business because oftentimes with agency you're not you're not going to enjoy the experience where you didn't do a great job you're going to or you're going to remember and appreciate the experience where you rocked it um were you able to show up effectively and where you're able to really you know utilize the skill set that you have and in looking in that 
you know, your, what, uh, who you attracted. So who that avatar is, is really important to recognize, right? Um, so are they, you know, a first time home buyer? Are you noticing that their families uh, specifically who are looking, maybe it's a lateral move where they've had two kids and they're looking to move into a house that more aligns with them. So that might be something like the alignment system or the alignment method, um, recognizing who your avatar is. So the fish that you're fishing for then allows you to understand what they're looking for. So um, I myself, if you're trying to attract, you know, I'm in a house where I would ideally love to have all the bedrooms on one floor. So if you can look at the buzzwords of what I'm looking for, if you're trying to attract me, <clears throat> is things like alignment, is things like finding the ideal neighborhood. <clears throat> Just one sec. No, this is, this is great. Like this is, uh, this is something that I think that we have gotten better at explaining over the last year, like spe specifically with you coming on the team and really um, being able to identify the niches, being able to really, you know, there, there, there's two things that we, you know, you and I chat about consistently that really drive performance of ads. One being brand, uh, you know, generally people with larger brands tend to, their ads tend to perform better. And number two is the niche. Like, you know, for example, we have a client right now that's running ads specifically towards first responders. Uh, you know, that's an example of like being able to create a system around helping first responders get into their homes without having to, you know, uh, extend it in a crazy amount of time time and effort because they're already doing multiple other things being able to like really speak in depth to the niche so like, absolutely that's amazing yeah and and, uh, and recognizing too that they, for them they have a specific set of problems uh, for them they have a specific set of you know what matters to them and and digging deep into that avatar of what they do what they spend their money on what matters to them what are their common frustrations? Those are the buzzwords um, that, or that's how, what you want to revolve your buzzwords around because you're going to be speaking their language. All right, so then uh, next section is discipline. Uh, so this was certainly, uh, actually, it was an easy area for me to come and discuss because I came from a personal training background. So it's very easy for me to call you out on your shit. Like if you're not, <laughs> If you're not showing up to the gym, you're not getting the results. If you're not submitting your, you know, meal plan to me, well, like there's not much I can do there because uh, if I couldn't track it, then I, I couldn't produce results from it. But ultimately, uh, first step in, in discipline or first section is definitely scheduling it. So uh, a plan is what and a schedule is when. It takes both a plan and a schedule to get things done. So utilizing your schedule to be able to build discipline within your business, uh, whether that be, you know, um, scheduling out when you're sending emails, uh, when you are role playing, and that role play needs to be a consistent. We uh, this is part of our three to thrive is really making sure that you're role playing, and you have needle and moving activities scheduled. You have cold calling scheduled. If you don't have it scheduled, you need to be hiring a company to go and do that because that is a huge part of generating conversation within your business. Uh, working your CRM needs to be something that's not a float. Uh, and brand development, all of these different things need to be in your schedule because they are what's going to build the business and build the foundation uh, in your business. Then uh, knowing your worth, knowing your worth. Um, and I find specifically it's more the agents that are kind of the first couple of years and or even agents over the while who, you know, have um, it, as things change, you know, you really get that feeling of scarcity that you let go of that worth or let go of the offer um, to cut the commission or to do specific things to bring in business. But <clears throat> what I found over the long term uh, is knowing your worth, confidence in your offer uh, and confidence in the value that you add. So um, I worked specifically with an agent where she knew that she was constantly being asked to cut her commission. 
And what she, we really broke down the numbers and recognized that she was doing the exact same thing for when she cut the commission than when she was charging 5%. And, and this was an issue for numbers and her business right down to numbers that, you know, if somebody's asking you to cut your paycheck, then you have to cut your services. Like that's just, you know, you, you, that's one plus one is two, right? But oftentimes <clears throat> there's, you know, this play against agent to agent. And um, I really implore you to see, like, first off, look at, you know, if you need to have two options, that's fine, right? But knowing your worth in what is that 4% and what is that 5%. Um, so it allows you to go in and say, you know what? I kill it at 5% and this is everything that I offer at 4% because I understand if that's something that you value, we can go ahead at the 4% and this is my package there. Um, it not only builds confidence, um, but in that it shows them, you know, your value, you know it. Uh, and I just have found that discipline and knowing this is really going to allow you to uh, build a good foundation in your business. Uh, knowing your process. So this is something that is hopefully, you know, hopefully you have that little like lull. I, I would often work with agents through kind of January, February as we <clears throat> pull out the Canva and, and start building, um, you know, your buyer's guide or your listing presentation. Um, but knowing your process is crucial and often not prioritized. Um, and, you know, um, as I was building this presentation, my, I'm, I'm talking my husband through it and he goes, oh, that's LARPing. I am not a gamer. I am not, um, I don't know anything about that. So if that resonates with you, he thought it would be funny. But LARPing is live action role play. And I actually had agents through calmer months go and do this so that I would be at my house the agent would pull up and I would have them take me through their sellings pro process. So they would sit down with me. They would have their listing presentation. If they had a guide, they would take me through the different rooms and just go through their entire process. After that, I would have them, you know, if they add me to their CRM, um, you know, are they, what's their contact and follow up on that. And we would write notes on it. And I cannot express to you enough how important this is because you need to understand what your process looks like on the other side. Because that's, again, where you're also going to see your value. You're also going to be able to know when things aren't working um, because you're going to be able to, and I'm sure you will find a few things where like, oh, I'm missing that. Um, or, oh, I could add value here. Or oh, I add value here, but when I'm busy, I don't do this. Um, and knowing your process allows you to move into, you know, noticing maybe you have some sections um, that you can start to automate or you can start to delegate. But if you're not solid on your process and know that it works from the uh, client's perspective, then you're not going to be able to build the foundation. Uh, to really move things forward, whether it be you're focused on scaling or even just building um, a more regular business flow on top of that. Cody, do you have anything to add on discipline? Yeah, you know, I want to hop in here because I think that this is something that we've chatted, you and I have chatted a lot about over the last little while around discipline around, you know, I, and specifically around knowing the process. I want to unpack, help unpack this for some people because I think that there is an element of knowing your process from like, from the time that you speak to somebody to the time that they enter your IDX to the time that you, you know, they're favoriting and they're starting to like properties. Like what is your process every step of the way look like? I think can be super powerful and you can begin to brand that process around, you know, creating the authenticity, but specifically around the buzzwords, you can brand the process and actually create a systematic approach. My question for you because we work with so many agents across North America and you've worked with agents uh, as well with your, with your agency. What, what can agents do or what are you seeing different larger teams do that maybe teams that are just starting out or single agents aren't doing? Like, are there like maybe like one to three things that you're seeing agents do that are really working in their process in order to get people over the finish line faster? 
Um, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of one of mine because we just did a podcast with a top performing agent recently. And something that they're doing is every single time a lead comes into their ecosystem, there's two things that they do. Number one, they add them to the CRM. And number two, they add them to a, um, they have their admin add them to a WhatsApp group. And that WhatsApp group has every team member in the group and they have direct access to essentially contact anyone they want on the team. So they have like essentially unlimited support that they need in order to get what they're looking for, whether it be, you know, two bedrooms, four baths, like wh whatever that specific thing is. I just found that really unique because I don't never really see many agents add their leads per se into a WhatsApp group as well to get to create that consistent flow of feedback. So what are some things that you're seeing that agents are doing around process that is really working? Uh, I think, and I'm, I'm only going to pick one because I think that there's so many ways that it can be applied is knowing your limits. Um, and the first way I see this applied is knowing if you want to provide a level of value that's at that 5% commission rate where, you know, you are, you know, you know, you go above and beyond, you support your clients. Uh, just like Cody said, in those groups, constant communication, honestly, ask yourself, how many people can you service at one time without depleting or impacting the quality of your service? This is a really important piece to have in your business because it, you know, it, it allows for you to stay at that optimal level and, and recognizing further to that when you need to start delegating. And uh, so if you, you know, are hitting that point where you feel like, you know what, I can really only service five or six clients comp like confidently at, at the level of value that I give, then you need to be bringing somebody else in. And that's a great thing because that's only going to elevate your business forward, but recognizing know your limits. Um, also with that, when I worked with clients, I would tell them like how, if somebody had this conversation with you, you go, um, you know what, I, um, when it comes to a buyer's agreement, they would go, you know what, I'm looking to work exclusively with three buyers right now. And you know what, I give 100% of my time to that. So that's why I need to know if you're going to be a part of my schedule, because you're in my schedule daily. So mm -hmm. committing, I'm committing that time to you. Can you commit that time to me? So it's a mutual commitment. But then also further to that, you go, you know what, I'm working with three buyers right now, but I would love to set you up on my drip. And I'm most likely going to find a home for this person next week. Then, you know what, I'll make sure I have that room in my schedule to prioritize the hunt for your perfect home. I love that. I love the know your limits and like, especially the outsourcing, you know, Vikram and I chat a lot about this in the Real Estate Growth Academy about like, you know, when he was growing his team about like some of his, his first people that he really hired were virtual assistants. And um, that would be the encouragement I would give anyone. If anyone wants a connection to a virtual assistant company, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, there are tons of amazing virtual assistant companies out there that where you can essentially outsource a task to that you do repetitively, but you need to know your processes first in order to hire out. Like you need to have a good understanding of like, what does A to Z look like in order to actually give somebody B, especially if you're hiring like a virtual assistant offshore. It's like, it's hard. Like that's the, one of the mistakes we see happen often. It's like you, you bring on this VA and then you're like, well, what do, what do I do? They should just know that they need to do this thing, but it's like, you need to document the processes. So can you give them an example of some like, like ways that we're documenting our processes um, and in like, maybe give them an example of how they even can document their process from A to Z. Uh, well, for us, I mean, like we're using Monday to as our task manager and, and ultimately, you know, tr like just tracking our, our conversation and, and creating, uh, we call it our ascension model, but knowing where the client is going. So like mapping out their ambition of where they want to get to and, and then having the educational tools in between that in our vault to be able to um, allow them to have the foundation and build off and scaffold it's like that's maybe where my teaching uh, background comes into play is just like scaffolding that knowledge because ultimately you know you guys you can't expect yourself to get from yourself to you know that that 50 
per person team. Uh, you need to scaffold that that knowledge and having the support system to to get you there. And often for us, we're stepping in uh, Sheridan Street, supporting people in, in generating those first conversations and in that recognizing where that plays in their business and then ultimately how we can create scalability. And then I would say from an agent perspective, um, a lot of it goes back to, as I mentioned with the, the, the LARPing. So <laughs> going through your process, um, going through your process, each individual one. And um, I've got some resources in here um, of guides that we've built or I've built out from some agents but knowing that it's uh, a solid process and something, and even internally, you know what, it's going to build a ton of confidence for you that when you're going into that listing presentation, you're going to believe that you're worth it and you're going to believe that your service uh, is entitled just as much, uh, if not more, than the other agent walking through the door and the, the process and foundation is going to give you that. All right. And uh, last one here we've got is consistency. Uh, the, or what everybody sees as the uh, slow and steady wins the race. Long-term consistency will always trump short-term intensity. Um, this was something that I used always when I was working with clients because um, you can come to the gym for, for two weeks straight. And if you don't come for the next three, four weeks, you know, um, you're not going to get those results that you originally had aspired to to get when you first originally walked in the door or signed up for personal training. So um, really transferring that into real estate is committing to your calendar. So we talked about scheduling things, but we talked about it's, it's very different to schedule it than it is to commit to it. So I would see agents and this drove me nuts. Um, you know, give me a little wave if, if this is you, but we would we would schedule something like this webinar, for example. Um, so the, the agent would have the webinar and during the webinar, they are checking emails, they are you know, answering their phone, their doors open, agents are stopping in, they're getting the lowdown on a new you know, listing that's coming up. I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna say it bluntly, you're not committing to the hour. Like you're not committing to, you're not committing to your calendar. If you're like sure agents are really great at doing a million things at once but relieve yourself of that by committing to your calendar to do your one thing and be really great at that one thing for that one hour i'm telling you you're going to get a lot more out of it um and it's also going to develop better habits for you because you're going to get out of that juggling um mindset through your whole entire day that you can feel like you're accomplishing you know, those three or four things that you set up for your day, because that is enough. And realistically setting, you know, less interruptions, less pulling is going to optimize your brain power as well. Um, making sure that, and, and also just recognizing that you, you want to stop breeding chaos mentality. Um, and I say this with love because, you know, there are, and I am going to acknowledge there are some times where you've got, you know, you've got to get this offer in before, you know, the deadline here and you've got to run with this person. I get it. There's chaos for sure. Um, but setting boundaries around that uh, is going to allow you to be able to, again, back to like building a better process. Uh, and our, and Cody and I's favorite with consistency is our three to thrive. So this has definitely been a game changer in our language and just implementing that for clients and achieving such better, um, you know, lead to close uh, ratio or conversation to, to close ratio. First one is definitely answering your phones. Um, so <laughs> answering your phones and having those conversations. We're a company that um, excels at generating those quality first conversations. Uh, and, you know, if you don't have that in your business, making sure that you are, you know, have something that's generating those first conversations but answering your phone um, is definitely a number one. You have to be having those conversations. Then from there, practicing those conversations. So we'll call it like LARPing, right? But um, live action role play was practicing those scripts or practicing those conversations because uh, often what comes up for us is, you know, you, you can crush a referral. Uh, that's great. That's a very, very different conversation 
than what you're having with a cold lead. And, and, and both are an incredible opportunity. And we want to see them both as, as humans and, and amazing potential, but don't, you don't just get good at that overnight. It's practicing uh, and making sure that you have a script to fall back onto is going to allow you to really thrive there and be consistent. Uh, and then last is engage. So engaging uh, for us really looks like, you know, are you engaging with your clients with market updates? Are you doing uh, deals of the week? Are you email sprinkling, you know, providing uh, extra value to your clients? These are so key in, you know, sh as I said earlier, it's just like you're showing up consistently and adding massive value because we, we see that, you know, the percentage that we bring in uh, of conversation, there's going to be 10% that are going to be that yes, 10% uh, that are going to be the no, and 80% of that is going to need education and time. Uh, so engage is really where you can embed education into your process uh, to be able to over time, again, eliminate those ups and downs because you've got people in your pipeline that you're nurturing over time to be able to, uh, yeah, convert when they're ready. The last one is automate, delegate, and track. So um, again, just thinking uh, once you have your listing process or your buying process, what can you automate out of that? Uh, I often found with agents is they were like typing the same mindless email to clients. Um, and, you know, like with technology we have now is like, oh my gosh, we can, we can automate, you know, the emails. We can automate, you know, what you're sending out and when based on when they opt in. Um, as Cody mentioned, hiring a VA, copying certain templates. Maybe you have checklists. Uh, for your listings that you can be giving to your clients so that, you know, they're all on the same page. You're not, you're not the one that's constantly having to give all of the tools that you're utilizing other resources. Um, you know, active campaign has been one that I've built some uh, really great systems out of as far as automation. We uh, use Zapier. And then a big one is tracking out of this is making sure that you know your key performance indicators. Um, I had to, I, or I was very surprised at, because for me, again, a personal trainer is I think if you can track it, then you know, what's working. You, you don't, you know, what's not working. So I could see when you're sneaking donuts in on a Saturday night, like that's not working for you when we're trying to hit your goal. But, you know, uh, even agents, I found, I could recognize that sure you're hammering out seven days a week, but you're actually not you know, growing your business. So then if you have your key performance indicators, you can recognize that. And that's where you really need to be hiring a company. You know, maybe you hire a company to be able to, you know, fill your pipeline. So you're not out door knocking or, or doing those types of things where you're like, oh, I'm so like spending too much time building your ads where you're working seven days a week. Maybe you delegate that out so that ultimately have you know, time for you to not burn out, um, but ultimately to be able to take that time to doing your zone of genius, which is most of you, right? It's like working with that client. Um, so that's definitely a big one, automate, delegate, and track. Cody, anything you want to add there? No, this is, this is great. Like, I think that like, this is a really important element, especially the KPI, the key performing indicator. Um, you know, if I could hop in here really quickly, I think that, <laughs> If you are looking to outsource or automate or delegate a task to like a virtual assistant or hiring somebody offshore, they need to have they need to have some sort of number that is easily trackable, like kind of a smart goal, specific, measurable, attainable, realistically, realistic and timely. They have to have a number that they are responsible to hit. But the only way that you know that number is through understanding what the flow of A to Z looks like specifically for a client. So like Jacqueline was saying is those live action role plays where you take up, you, you break apart every single step of your process. And there's tools that you can use to do this. Uh, there's a tool that uh, a lot of our, our operations director uses consistently. He use, uh, it's called Scribe, where it's like, if you do a task over and over again, you could use Scribe, you could use Loom, where you actually record the thing that you're doing, and then you can hand it off to a virtual assistant. And then that virtual assistant, can have a KPI or like a number 
that they are responsible for hitting. So they have a clear understanding of like, are they doing the job right? Or are they underperforming? Like that's the biggest thing we find when people begin to uh, delegate things. They're like, hey, you do this, but it's like, well, I don't either A, know how to do it or B, I'm not sure what done looks like. And that would be the biggest thing I would say is like, before you go out and hire a virtual assistant or before you decide to delegate, have a good understanding of what the process looks like and then have a good understanding of what that KPI hits and what done looks like. Um, Can you speak to that a little bit? Because I know that like you work with our team on like what done looks like. Um, With regards to, you know, like their system or with regards to- Their system. um, Yeah, I think that, I'll pull a specific client. I think that done for them, it looks different for everybody in a sense of like how they want to design their business. Um, So again, that's back to why I originally originally went into uh, the hermit crab or like even before that is the light, right? Is like, you know, a lot of you get into this business, they're they're amazing perks. Um, But, you know, a lot of the time it gets lost along the way. Um, Just bringing yourself back to like, like what what do you want to show up like today? And and what is that going to look like if you do that day to day for the next 10 years? Um, because if you're, if you're working 11, like 12 hours, I don't, I mean, I couldn't do it, but I, I don't know if you can, but it, like, that just is a, you aren't able to do that for 10 years. And, and ultimately a part of your, your system is going to fail. Uh, unfortunately that's usually physical health, um, you know, or, or whether that be your family. Uh, so recognizing that done is going to look different for everybody, but but your done needs to be defined, um, needs to be according to, you know, not only your business, but how you want to show up in your personal life, uh, both emotionally, mentally, and physically. Awesome. Love it. All right. So um, when it comes to reprogramming your pattern learning, as I said, you need to go back to uh, those three print- principles that we have in, in our triangle there. Uh, you're going to get, as I said, pulled all over the place. I, the first agent I worked with, she was, you know, 500 GCI, just for just herself. And it was chaos. We were getting pulled all over the place. And it was the, the foundational issue was, you know, short-term fix. Like we were thinking short-term, short-term, we're just going to get through this, just got to get through this one. Like really, this was her business. Like this was something that she was building. And uh, focusing out on the long-term gratification or, or how you're showing up today, is that going to you know, be sustainable 10 years from now? And um, foundationally, the, the programming needs to, how do I say this with kindness? When I, when I was working at the gym is I would have come in with people with the most ambitious goals. Um, you can buy the gym membership. But if you don't schedule time to go, you're not going to get the results. If you go hard, as I said, for two weeks, you fall off the work wagon, you're still not going to get the results. The successful real estate agents, you guys, the 19, 20 years, you guys get it, is you have to consistently show up and you have to have the systems in place to allow you to consistently uh, show up. And then look at each conversation as an opportunity to show up to that gym. Um, because uh, with Sheridan, at Sheridan Street, we really push for each, each of our agents and, and one of the key performance indicators for them is the conversations. Um, you know, like lead gen is important, absolutely, because you need to be filling uh, top of funnel, that pipeline, but it's the conversations reflecting on those. See it as showing up to the gym. You're not just going to go to the gym and, you know, move a few weights and go out. You're not going to you're there, but you're not there. You're not going to get those results. So making sure that your awareness is there on, you know, recording the calls, making sure that your awareness is there on like you're, you're ready, you have the scripts and then you're reflecting on, you know, your process and making sure that that's moving you forward for the next client, the next client. All right. I can't see it here, but Cody, um, my section is blocked. What did I write fully on the bottom there? (laughs) <laughs> um yeah that's blocked we were having we were having that issue earlier uh with yeah the, yeah with it being blocked uh you know I, I already said to people we're gonna get them the slides so yeah there you go yeah. 
Here, I moved you. We're all good. So um, what is a program in your business you've let determine outcomes in your business that you can end today and rebuild? So I, again, I want you guys to write down a program that you've let determine outcomes in your business that you can end today. So that hermit crab, what you're doing is you're deciding that Shell is more uncomfortable being in that position than taking a leap and going to bigger and better. I want you to write that down. And these things can be mindset. It could be process. You know, we've gone through a few examples of different systems, lack of process or lack of system. I'll give you 15 seconds there. One thing I just want to add is there is a survey at the uh, in there. If you want access to the replay and the slides, uh, you can just fill out the survey in the uh, in the chat below. Yeah, awesome. All right. So when you're letting your momentum work for you, this is the hustle smarter, ending those ups and downs. Um, with a buyer in contract, I want you guys to think about what is your process for referral. So what we're going through here is opportunity for systems and processes. This is where you're going to be able to end that, that hustle is because if you have a process for your referrals, you are, and we're going to get in, it go into the next slide on this, is you're actually you know, building that momentum. How are you making this experience for them? As we said, that live action role play. How are you asking for testimonials and reviews? When is that a part of your process? How are you taking advantage of the sale that you currently have? And are you adding them into your database? Do you have one? And what's your touch point schedule moving forward? Huge uh, opportunity there for not only the you know, automation, but also just opportunity to build systems off those. Um, so this one here, I just wanted to highlight um, what I'm currently seeing. Uh, currently seeing a lot of, you know, I've got this in the pipeline with no buyer agreement. It might be coming up, it might not be, uh, which, you know, builds that excitement. And then we've got the, you know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Um, we've got all of a sudden we have a house that needs to be listed next week. So, you know, the ball gets dropped on the things that, you know, moving your business forward. And now we're going to focus 100% on this. And then the, you know, the buyer doesn't come through, the seller doesn't come through. Let's end that for you guys. Let's move forward with, you know, this is the, one of the best ways that you can actually work smarter is you have that sale. What you're going to do is you're going to circle prospect around that. This is going to end the feeling like you're starting over every sale. It's going to allow you to piggyback off that success. So um, I'm not going to dive too much into them because we're going to be able to get you those uh, scripts there. I've got those as a link. And then, as I said, those testimonials and referrals. This is generating conversations for people that you've already established trust with. These are gold. All right. Takeaways here. Um, I want to make sure that you guys, for creating processes that give you more time and growth, establishing your awareness of your pattern behaviors when you're in scarcity. Right. So rebuilding these patterns based on where you're wanting to take your business, not on the short term, using your calendar to schedule out your three to thrive, automate what you catch yourself repeating in your process. So you're giving yourself more time to do those needle moving activities. Delegate when you're outside of your work hard, rest hard hours. As I said, know your limits, track your numbers, know what's supporting you and producing. And then when it comes to conversations daily, building your brand so strong that it appears like you have something no one else does. Speaking their language. Um, I worked with an individual. She decided to call her method her home sweet home method. She's super country out here in Peterborough. Um, you know, all of those home sweet home signs. So it was perfect branding for her and that's all of her language. It's a great example. The three to thrive, answering, if you're get out, knocking on doors, adding massive value, practicing, and engaging with you know the clients you have in your CRM as well as out in the community. Go to the you know the park or go to an area where your ideal client would be. For me, it's the market, right? Just go to the market, start conversations, get engaging and practicing, uh, becoming confident in your offer and leveraging your momentum. These resources, we're not going to go over them for time. What we'll do is Cody and I will get those all to you. Want to give you guys some time to ask any questions.
Awesome. That was phenomenal. Really do appreciate everyone. Uh, there's a link in the chat below uh, for quick service. It tells us we have nothing to sell you today. Just tell us how we did. Uh, it'll give us and we'll get you access to the replay and the slides. Uh, but we just want to thank, thank you everyone for kind of joining us. Um, fill out the survey. We'll get back to you. If you want, uh, if you're like at this stage right now where you're like, hey, I really need to delegate. Um, reach out to us. We'd be happy to uh, connect you with a VA company we know um, because, you know, we know that by delegating properly, by creating systems and processes in your business, it can really make long, it can really create the longevity you need. So we'd love to make that intro for you. Um, yeah, you, 100% you'll get a copy of the presentation. Uh, Jacqueline, I just want to say I thank you. I honor you for, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule uh, from serving our clients to just provide massive value back to everyone kind of in our community and in, in our world. Uh, I hope everyone got a ton of massive value today. I know I did. I took some notes here just around tackling the unknown and uh, and just really making sure that we're doing things that we're, we're not doing things just because we have to do them. We're, we're looking objectively at our businesses to, uh, to look at every step of the process to see, hey, can we automate this? Can we delegate this? And are we actually tracking these things in order to create the momentum we want in our business. So Jacqueline, I just want to say thank you more than anything for taking time out of your day to do this. And uh, I want to say thank you everyone for tuning in with us today. Uh, you know, really do appreciate it. Hope you get a ton of value. Hope that you go automate, you go delegate, and you go track a little bit more in your business in order to create the longevity that you're all wanting to create. So thank you for showing up today. Really do appreciate it. Uh, fill out the survey in the chat below. It's just shared in uh, street.io forward slash survey. Fill out that. We'll get you a copy of the presentation. It lets us know uh, that you showed up because that's really the only way we know that you showed up. You fill out that survey and uh, we'll get you access to the replay. We access some resources, but want to say thank you. Jacqueline, any last words that you want to add before we take off today? Uh, yeah, I just love to tell you guys like what I always said at the end of working a hard day with agents, like you guys are helping so many people and uh, just gaining that, you know, it's nice to have the pat on the back and and even though we're, you guys are striving constantly to push forward and implement new things, just, you know, taking time to reflect and Cody does this always with our teams where we're always thinking for, but it's really important to recognize and appreciate where you're at and the hard work. And it's going to make driving and getting into those uncomfortable positions and experiences even easier. So, uh, yeah, appreciate your time. And, uh, if there's any way we can help, we're here for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And thank you, everyone. We will see you all soon. Bye, guys.